Hey guys, and welcome to episode 20 of the Modded Sport Let's Play series. I think we're doing quite a bit better than we did in the last season, so guys, thank you very much for, you know, watching all. I hope you've all been enjoying it so far. And uh, speaking of enjoying it, it seems that in the last episode, you guys really enjoyed the whole creature tweaking thing, which is awesome, but I, I quite enjoyed it. A bit more than I thought I would, if I'm honest. And I did ask how, um, was that how to unlock more parts? And you guys explained in the comments that you get more parts by scanning and abducting. And basically, you kind of got, like, got to find them like you did in the creature stage. So thank you everyone for the explanations. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to start with this random planet. So I'm going to try and increase my library, if you will. I think the best way to do that is going to be to use the Staff of Life, since you know, I have it unlocked, I may as well. This way it's going to forcibly randomly generate new creatures. If I go to the current planets, I might just be picking up from the same things over and over. So, Staff of Life, it will randomly generate more creatures. And while it's doing that, I know that you can get like a, a planet scan and a planet abduction. I think the planet abduction is from, um, what was it? That was from Scientist Archetype? I'm not quite sure. I know that, oh no, 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 that's uh, something else actually. I know that the planet abduction thing, like you get one or five of every species on the planet, I think that's a um, archetype ability. I'm pretty sure though that I can get a, a worldwide scan somehow. Maybe it's in main tools. Ah, right. Requires Zoologist 5 or the Eco Hero 5. That will probably be worth me getting a hologram scout. I want that. I, I don't know why. I, I just I just really want that. Like, beam down onto other, other planets, empires, or tribes and such. Uh, requires Zoologist 5 or Eco Hero 5. Alright, how do I get those then? Uh, Eco Hero is... Yeah, we're not doing that one. So Zoologist 5. Oh god. <laughs> I gotta fill out o ecosystems. It would actually be quicker for me to just manually pick them all up. Did I stop? Or wait, it didn't finish. Oh no, it is finishing. Yeah, okay, it's actually going to be quicker for me to just uh, manually scan them all. So, I guess that's what we're doing. Let's just uh, get a bit of everything. Bunch of creatures down there, little pretty looking things I've got. So far I have one creature scanned. Alright, we're off to a good start. Where can I find some more creatures? Uh, hello, creatures? Actually, um, yeah, I'm doing this kind of wrong, aren't I? <laughs> let's just go ahead and find a creature. I don't know, let's, mm, let's go for, actually, let's go for, the something down there. What are you? You are a bunch of parasols. It's kind of boring, I don't really want to do a parasol. Let me go ahead and edit that creature that we just scanned a moment ago. If I can find it, over there. Right there, apparently? No, over there? Yes, here we go. Rather than just uh, me scanning it all, because I it's either I scan every individual creature, ooh, or I just go ahead and edit the creatures and get the parts along the way. I think that would probably be better. And let's face it, it's going to be really, really difficult for me to get uh, modded stuff. So how does this look so far? Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. I like, I like the face. I like the uh, feathery face. Alright, that's interesting then. Let's see then if we can like enhance this. So first of all, it's a bit too skinny, in my opinion. Like maybe I've just become a bit uh, biased over time, but I quite like creatures having not fat per se, but a bit of, uh, what's the word, a bit of mass. You know, so they actually look plausible. I know it's spore, it doesn't have to be realistic, but it's little things like that that kind of uh, get me a bit. What on earth is that piece here? Oh, it's some wings hidden inside it. Alright, no problem. Actually, I need to pull that in one more. Yep, like that. Give it a proper tail. Well, <laughs> I say a proper tail. I think a limb tail is uh, less realistic than the spine one. But again, yeah, who cares? We're going for looks here. We're going to make it look pretty. The pretty flowery dragon. Can I like do that? Yep, like that. Angle's a little bit funny, but it should be, should be okay. Actually, that's something I didn't really do properly in the last episode. Who is this actually made by? If you like my creations and make comments on them, please don't forget to give them a oh, Okay, cool. Flower dragon. So let's see then who made this flower dragon. If I go into, yes, copy database. Flower dragon. Who made that? Himmerslob. 
Ah, right. That must be one of his earlier ones. Yeah, 2009. Wow, that's a very early one. Got like that. Like, that's a bit more exaggerated. I don't know why I just really like having exaggerated um, features on dragons, like horns and such. Make that one quite a bit bigger as well. And make that, you know, like phase, phase out to get smaller as it goes down, like a really large, majestic crest. Which, actually, now that I think about it, it's reminded me of the Rock Drake <laughs> from Ark. Which, um, yeah, if anyone's not seen that yet, I did actually remake the uh, Rock Drake from Ark from the new Aberrations pack. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it. I'm really excited for that. I want to give it feathery wings. I don't think that's really suitable though. I think we're better off giving it butterfly wings. But then again, no, he did give it webbed wings, like the uh, Bat Boys. Mm. I think I have these. Like nice big buffalo wings. Like, what is it called again? Flower dragon? Yeah, let me kind of like a bit of a uh, fairy dragon. Or a fairy drake. Now, he did also have like a flowery thing going on on the tail. Maybe the tail should actually be pointed upwards. Since it was originally. Kind of like that. You know, make it a little bit, a little bit different, you know? A bit of different never hurts. How did he have it originally? Right, it was like that. So I am, I know I am using a different part right now. Like he was originally using the feathers and I'm using the flower. I think it's okay though. I'll try and capture or retain as much as possible. I might be using the wrong spit part, but I think, you know, it's okay. Oh, that works quite well actually. And have it just kind of bushy out along the limbs. Like so, like so. And one more there. And one last thing I think is required is just to make the, uh, what do you call it, the shoulders a bit bushier. Which, I don't know why, another thing I like doing, just like how I like to exaggerate the features on the head, I just like to add like a bit of detail on the shoulders. And maybe a little bit on the chest, like here. There we go. I think that looks pretty cool. And now for the colours. So let's see how this looks like with the current colour scheme. I think it might be required to make this another rainbow creature. Hmm. Yeah, I think it will be required. So if I just go to my Swapeed and search for rainbow, let's get the same one that we were using before. Actually, no, that's a, I want it to retain the yellow. Let us try... So anything I can see that's got a bit of yellow into it. Oh, wait, actually. That looks promising. Let's see what this one looks like. It's taking a little while to render. Ooh. I like that. The tail I'm not 100% with, but I am trying to make it, like, intentionally different. Might just be me, like, not being used to it. But otherwise, I think that was cool. Great. So we've got our first creature tweak down. Right. Oh, I think this is another one of Himmel's Lab's creations. I recognise those. Let us check. It is called... Yeah, okay. Judging by the uh, description, I think it is by Himmel's Lab's again. It's called a Spitzkick. Spitzek? Right. That. It's cool. It's interesting. I don't think I can do anything with this. It's actually really cool, the way it animates. That's fantastic. Okay, I'm going to skip this one because I don't think I can really edit it or alter it in any way. Right, so we have one here. No idea what they are. They kind of look, look like weird little trilobites with wings. Oh! Oh, that's a cool one. Oh, wow. Damn, right, okay, I am, um, I think it's by Cecil. No, by Moldib, wow. These hardy creatures live in the warmer regions of the homeworld, and bask in the sun to keep warm. They travel in large herds, which makes it difficult to approach, as they are extremely hostile when they feel threatened. That's really cool, I like that. Maybe it's just like, once again, just kind of, um, ah, what's the word? Exaggerate styles and such. Let's try and like, maybe for example, make that one a different version of the previous one. Have like that one there. Let's make that one actually yeah, a bit closer in. So maybe 
what we could probably do with this one is, uh, like, imagine it like a me mega evolution from um, Pokemon. So we have the current thing as is. And then we take the current thing and we just make it, like, completely over the top. <laughs> I think that might be our best way of approaching this. But I normally have, like, some special feature, like, psychic -ness, or maybe I'm thinking of legendaries now. I don't know, I'm just gonna stop talking. <laughs> Something like that, perhaps. And I'd have another smaller one up above. Oh no, is that gonna work? Uh, I guess it kind of works. And just to like kind of merge it all in so you can't see those bits. Maybe have like a horn there? I guess that kind of works. We have these little things here. We uh, obviously have to duplicate these. I mean, it, ob it seems like, you know, the only uh, reasonable thing to do right now. There you go. Do that. Do a couple more because we can. Kind of like that, and then have some at the front. Like so. <laughs> wow. Right. Uh, because it's a mega evolution, it's obviously got to have its feet, you know, like completely, um, whatever the word is. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. Hmm, okay. Maybe like that then. And what else? Let's see how it looks like when it's textured then. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that looks pretty damn over the top, doesn't it? <laughs> Jeez. Ah, I've got some ideas. So add some more of these like, to either side. So now whatever this... Uh, so it was originally like a rock Pokemon. Now it's like t turning into like some kind of rock psychic Pokemon. It's got like floating balls all around it. Right, now what happens if I change, let's say, I'm pretty sure that yellow is the coat coloration. So let's try and make the detail blue. What gets affected then? Oh, there, yeah, okay, I like that. It just makes it like a little bit different, just a bit, just a bit. Sweet. Now we have our mega, mega rhino alloys. Alloy? I'm not sure. Let's creature tweak this one. Wait, did I just click on the wrong thing? Oh my god. Its face is horrifying. Oh! Oh, that's uh, that's lovely. Lovely. Okay, what is this then? <laughs> In the early stages of a loop of a loom vex's life, it is not much of Wait, it is much, not much more than a defensive grub, sleeping and eating. They are little more than animals, though they quickly develop sk their skills to a rank for their case. For they, for they cast? Queen grubs are very big. The Lumpex grub. And who was this made by? Search for Lumpex. Ah, uh, there, by, by Kia Corp. So what do these look like then when they get bigger? Let's try, let's check out the worker. A worker for the hive, they slave away under their queen's commands. They will happily do nearly anything by her command. They tend to her collection of beasts and disloyal workers are thrown into the arena. Workers cannot fly and tend to find food. It's kind of remind me of the um, Shakir a little bit. Interesting. Ah, right then. So this is the grub version of those freaky little things. That face, that face is just not right. Look at that face. I mean, look at it squinting at me. Stop squinting. Its eyes are just like bulging out. Yeah, okay. You, you can stop that now. And just for that, I think, I think this one would be a good one to corrupt. And, uh, you know, everyone knows that corrupted creatures get very spiky. You know, if World of Warcraft has taught me anything, when thing gets corrupted by the fell, they get very spiky. Let us uh, replace the haycorns here with keratin horns. There we go, kind of like that. Let's do another one. There, and another one. There. And uh, this creature is obviously very angry. I mean, I think it goes without saying. This is obviously going to be like a very angry, very angry creature. So it needs to have big angry eyebrows. Or eyelids, whatever you want to call it, like that. And because it is so angry, it also obviously needs tusks. 
Right, yeah, like that. It's got some more haycorns, so we're gonna replace all the haycorns we can with um, the keratin horns. Got one there. Got a bigger one there. Got another big one there. Got a little one there. And a moderately sized one there. Let us get some of these things going. Let's get one like a nice big fat one on its face. I like that. And I think we should just like cover up the rest of the grub with uh, these kind of things here. And last but not least, let us get this here. Do a bit of that, do a bit of that, do a bit of that. Right, so, colour scheme. How is the colour scheme on this one going to look? I'm thinking black and green. So, how am I going to want to do this? Probably. Like the base body itself, really brown. Like a very, very dark brown. Like a greyish dark brown. Yeah, there you go, like that. That's good. Uh, right, so I'm going to test out the colour scheme. So I'm going to put green on that one, blue on that one. This way I can see what uh, which details, texture and which uh, colour. Like for example, you can see how the uh, mouth is green, the um, some details are blue, so now I can decide what I want. The blue one will be red. Maybe like a kind of a bit of a gruesome pinkish red. And what is what pattern is that? Okay, so there is a texture for the texture, excuse me, for the red. So for that, oh, what if I make it all veiny? Maybe not. What if I make it like cuts and such? Oh, that kind of works. I like that. It looks so shiny in these new graphics. Speaking of which, if people are wondering about the new graphics, check out the um, my new 60 FPS and HD creature graphics tweak. And that is how you get nice and shiny things. Although the editor is a lot lighter than usual because it's a creature tweaker, it's a different editor. I did have people asking me about that in the previous episode. So um, it won't be this bright and uh, oversaturated in the, in the regular editors. It's only because it's creature tweaker. Oh wow, that looks... Wow, look at all the, all the veins like in the... Um, whatever those things are called. Those uh, CNT parts. Wow, that sounds so detailed, the new um, tweak. I face so, it's just not right. right. I think I'm starting to spend a bit too much time on this one now. <laughs> okay, there we go. I think all the little uh, dips and holes there suits the theme I was going for. Cool. Alright then. Three down. And I will creature tweak that dance looking fellow there. Alright. This reminds me of um of Spike from The Land Before Time. I wonder if that's, if that's intended. Oh, it is from The Land Before Time. Oh wow. By T uh how do I pronounce that? T Claren B, I think. Oh wow, okay, that's really cool. <laughs> that eye though, what is that eye? Oh, it's that! Oh, I see what he's done. So the eye is actually like that big bubble thing there, but he's kind of like covered in all the white. So now it just looks like a like, really nice, cool, like a uh, basic eye. That looks, I like that. Ooh, I might be borrowing that myself at some point. So, this, what species was this? This is a uh, Ankylosaur, wasn't it? Oh, he's a Nodosaur. Right, that's. Oh. Go away, there you go. Right, I see. I see, I see. In that case, I think we're gonna like uh, retain the whole dinosauriness of this. Gonna make the tail a little bit bigger since uh, I know it's like based on like one of the uh, kids, but you know, I think they would like make an adult version maybe. So, what I'll do is I'll delete all of that, delete all of these. I'm obviously not going to be making this dinosaur accurate, so I'm not by any means. <laughs> gonna be here for like half an hour if I try to do that. But what I will do is just nail down the ever living hell out of it. Give it like all the armor it needs, or like natural plating, whatever you want to call it. And just generally like bulk it up. And have another layer of it all going down here. That one here gets uh, progressively smaller. That's as small as I can make it. Can I make it any, any like um, small that way? Yes, I can. Good. And I'll use these shell shards again. I would rather use the keratin horns, but I want to like, you know, keep to the spirit of the original creation and use the um, shell shards for this piece here. For this uh, part. Piece? Part? I don't know. So, do that one 
there, kind of that bit there, there you go. One there, one there. Tip of the tail. Just make these like really large and dramatic. I know that uh, Encarlo's, I know it's a no to solve, I'm just gonna say Encarlo. I know that Encarlo's have, um, you know, like the clubs on the tail, whereas Stego's have the spikes. It doesn't matter, I'm just going for something. You know, just having a bit of fun with the, with the design, just playing around. Maybe something like that. Oh, no, let's uh, do that one again, because it kind of reshifted there. And, of course, now I want to make it look like they're actually flowing into the same pattern. So I've got to edit that one a little bit. Right, and the colour scheme. How is this looking? It looks a little bit dull, in my opinion. Oh, actually, yeah, it's because of the... Um, there is a texture on the back that I've accidentally completely covered with... Uh, no downs. Right, okay. Let us see then if we can find another down sword. It's a by uh, T. Claren, wasn't it? Yes, T. Claren B. So in that case, let's go find some of the other creations. T. Claren B. I'm looking for something greyish. Actually, let's try that Taurosaurus paint skin. Okay, yes, absolutely. I like that a lot. <laughs> I really like that. Cool. Alright then. That's uh, four done. I'll do one more, then I'll see how much time we have left. Where does I have whatever that is there? Let's go check that out. Oh wow, look at that! Now that looks like a Pokemon. Is that really cool? Uh, using limbs for um, all these branches here. Use of horns is really interesting, actually. All around there, and the leaves. What the leaves done are like spectacular. What is this then? This is a Neo. Oh God, I didn't mean to do that. No, nope. undo. Oh, bugger. Um, <laughs> let's just like, cancel out of that, shall we? I, I want to retain the names. I think it's the right thing to do to re to retain the names. Okay then, <laughs> let's try that again, then, shall we? So the texture up first, so we can see it. That's really cool. Okay then. Neo Jungle Golem. By Cecil. Right, I see. Cool, okay. Okay. I have no idea how we're gonna do this one. Um... Oh, I didn't know Cecil made these kind of things. I know Cecil for all of his, like, Golem kind of creations. But they've always been, like, very... Rocky and stony. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of the right, like, statues kind of thing. No, I don't think that's really the right way to describe it. But either way, I didn't know they did these kind of, um, what would you call this? Organic, I guess? It's kind of organic creations. Right. And by the way, guys, if you're wondering who all these creators are that I keep on mentioning, the majority of them I do have on my buddy list. So, any of you who, like, know my Spore account, which is, you know, obviously from Rebecca's Overweight, have it, um, referenced everywhere. Uh, if you find my Spore account and you look at my buddy list, then you can see like all these creators I keep on referring to. Uh, trying to think of what else I can add to this. This is going to be a bit of a hard one, actually. I'll try a bit of that there, actually. As I feel like uh, the face could do... Oh god, no. That's a bit big. Oh no, didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to delete things. They're just happening. Okay, if I have like, there you go, okay, if I've got that embedded in, it'll kind of like create a bit of a pattern there. And of course, you know, this is just me. I've got to layer it. So I have uh, one, another one there that's a bit smaller. Kind of like so. Uh, I'm really not sure what to add to this. Like, this is really like well polished on its own. I mean, I'll just splurge things on and try to get me going, but this is going to be quite a difficult one. Maybe like, actually no, keep that one there. We don't want them really long. Like that. Maybe, hmm. Just not 100%. But again, I'll just keep going though. I have another layer of those running down the side. Like a, small la a smaller layer here. Like that. Uh, a bit like that. Oh, no, didn't mean to move that. Yeah, it just gives that, that uh, extra bit of, um, thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
probably one thing that you guys see me do a lot is, uh, as well, you know, as well as making dragons and adding horns onto everything, is layering. Like, I don't know why. Like, maybe this is just me, but I feel like repetitive features, like a line of, um, a line of details, whether it's a line of spikes or a line of scales or a line of whatever. I always find like they're quite pleasing to look at, like that. It's just something I like about it. Even though, even though when you think about it, it is actually extremely repetitive. I don't know. If you guys feel differently, let me know. Uh, maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> uh, is that an upside down haycorn? Yeah, it is. Okay, I'm gonna flip, up, flip that one over then so we get a bit of um, extra colour going. And of course, make them a bit smaller as they go down. Add them into the feet. Or onto the feet, more like, not in them. I uh, can't quite rotate it properly though. The ball is hidden. Put one there. One there. Good. One there. Another one there. And finally there. Not sure why that the back of the feet are um, quite bare. I feel like maybe you just got, you know, got um, limited by the complexity limit. So I'll just go ahead and finish that bit for him. And make it a bit smaller for the, you know, so the limbs don't cut through it. Like that maybe. Move that one a bit more to the center. Actually, uh, still cutting through it. Let's go ahead and just tilt it. Like so. There we go. And again, move that one in a bit more. So now the entire foot's covered. Hmm. What else? I'm really not sure about this one. Oh, I know. You can never go wrong with um, these things here. Let's just add that little extra thing. Like, they. Again, I don't know if it's just me or not. <laughs> But when it comes to these little whisker things, what are they called? Whisker tickler. Oh. <laughs> when it comes to these parts, I feel like they don't add add much, but at the same time they add a lot. Like they're very subtle thing. Again, I, I feel like maybe, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm losing it. I must be if I keep on missing the damn <laughs> radial. Something like that. Bit there. Chuck one there. Uh, what happened? What would it look like if I put them on the flowery bits here? Oh, I don't even reach. Okay, never mind. Actually, say now, what happens if I get to one of these? The pom 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 pom? Yes, pom pom. It's called. Okay then. Do like a similar thing that I did with the previous um, mega evolution creature. Kind of like just make it like hover on, like that maybe. Uh, it's kind of interesting. If I do another one down there, but a smaller one. Oh, no, it didn't mean to do that. Move it back a bit like that. And move a bit closer to the haycorn. Okay, I guess that's interesting. Let's see how that textures out. <laughs> Alright, interesting. Well, I felt like the colours were a little bit... Mm, I don't know, the colours feel a little bit off. What's it called again? Neo Jungle Golem. Alright, let's see then if we've got anything else from the Seesaw. Like any more colour schemes we can get from him. Oh, let us try this one from the Guardian. Is there any other green ones while I'm looking? Uh, there's some very vibrant green ones around here. I do love his Sacron. I thought I always found this one to be one of my favourite creations. A Mighty Hunt of the Planets of Scion. The Sacron hunts in the complete darkness of all times, but the Sacron uses bioluminescent bio sacs on its limbs to disorientate its prey, allowing the Sacron to go for a lethal bite on the neck. This was always one of my absolute favourite creations in the ball. I loved this. Absolutely adored it. But uh, yeah, let's try the colour scheme from one of these guys up here. Can I do that? It won't let me. Probably clicked on the wrong thing though, me. Let's try again. Yeah, here we go. Oh wow. Okay, it's a bit bright. <laughs> it definitely is quite a bit bright. Um, I kind of like it, but at the same time, I'm not a hundred percent. Let's try another one of his uh, color schemes. Venusaur. Giving Pokemon creatures another chance to survive blast here for some reason one of my most popular creations.
Right, I think there's something wrong with his jaw. But otherwise it's cool. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that there for now. <laughs> um, okay, let's, yeah, let's, uh, let's move away from that, slowly. And let's find a different green creature. Ooh, let's try these. A bit more subtle. Not as, um, overpoweringly bright. I'll take that back. It is overpoweringly bright. <laughs> Alright, so let's see what other colours we have. I'm trying to, you know, stick to the whole green foresty thing. I may have to change though if I can't find anything. Let's let's try that one. Or are you going to be like another really luminescent creation? Yes. That one reminds me of a chicken for some reason. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> right, maybe one of his older creations then. Maybe we'll get some more like there. Yeah, I've got a lot of uh, like a uh, stony golem kind of things up there. There's the original one here. Uh, oh wow, it's a dragon. Board again, might add a more in-depth description later. Well, I don't think we're getting that, are we? <laughs> Let's see what this Vulcan dragon of his looks like. I didn't know he made dragons. Oh wow, that's pretty cool actually, I like it. Interesting, very interesting. Yeah, when it came to like general styles, Seesaw is always one of my favourites because his style was extremely unique. Like a lot of creators had very unique styles. A lot of other creators kind of... It's hard to, just, it's hard to explain. Some had styles, some had themes. I think me, for example, I'm one who has themes. Like I base my creations off of different things a lot. Whereas people like Himmelslob, people like Seesaw, they had like their own established styles. Vertifan's another one. Yeah, that's one I like. I like that colour scheme. A little bit more, not quite as abrasive on the eyes this time. But enough contrast that the parts, you know, kind of stand out a bit. I like that. Cool. Right, cool. I think that'll be probably it for now then. So we've got five in total. Five uh, very cool ones in total. On the planet Sepele. Where is my... There it is. Go to the Hamid. Hamid? What? No, the, the uh, planet Himmelstis. <laughs> I was just reading it while trying to say planet and just completely dumped that word out. Right then. So where's our creatures? Here we go. So we have our dear flower dragon. Which looks really cool. I do like that one quite a bit. We have our rhino alloys. Our mega rhino alloys, I remember. <laughs> We're doing the same cannons. We have our Lumbex Grub, the corrupted Lumbex Grub. Let's hope it doesn't sort of plague upon all of my other creations and you just fell asleep. Okay, you do you. You do you, my friend. We have the Nod, the Nodosaur, who just fell over. Or did he fall asleep? Oh, he fell asleep. Okay, well, wow, he was clearly tired. <laughs> and we have the Neo Jungle Golem. Which blends in quite well to the surroundings. Are they all just falling asleep? Yeah, they are. Okay, and I have a... Yeah, whatever. You can defend yourselves. You'll be fine. Now, one thing I do want to do is I'm not really liking the uh, redness of this planet. And... Oh. Never mind. <laughs> I can't change the colour of it, so I'm kind of um, a bit scuppered on that one. <laughs> but otherwise, I think... I think that's going to be it for today. I have a feeling that time flew by really fast. We're probably above the usual half an hour um, time frame I'll try to aim for. But uh, that's okay though. If you guys like the creature tweak and things, you still want to see more. Like we've got two episodes now. If you want to see more, let me know. If you want to see anything else, as always, let me know. I do read the comments. I might not reply all the time, but I really do try to read as many as I can. But as always, guys, I'm just trying to get like an epic zone out. Like, there you go, with these little crocodile things. Oh, no, that's scared. Never mind. Okay, then. Never mind. <laughs> um, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and as always, I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching, and take care. Bye!